quick, maybe not so quick video on how to get rid of a shaky bow, the dreaded shaky bow. Oh my goodness. So um, just to clarify, I am not talking about the kind of shaky bow that you get when you're nervous because that is something a little bit different, I think. Um, we're going to be just talking about when you're just at home and your bow is just bouncing all over the place and it's driving you crazy. So that's the kind of shaky bow that we're going to be talking about. So um, the first thing that we're going to, to do is just change our posture because a lot of times we're just hunched over and we don't really realize it. So first thing we have to do is tap out our posture and I'm sitting down at the moment. Um, just so that you can see me a little bit better. But I would recommend standing. So stand, have your head and your spine and your shoulders open, everything aligned and looking nice. And then we're gonna put the instrument up and you want your instrument to be in a comfortable spot too. So when you have your instrument up, you don't really want it all the way over here because then your arm's gonna have to come over there as well and it's gonna have to work harder, right? We also don't want it all the way here because then we're gonna kinda get cramped over here and the left hand will have a really hard time. You see how it has to struggle? So we want kind of a 45-ish degree angle happening. You also don't want your scroll pointing all the way down. You want it kind of at eye level so let it kind of fall back into you. I'm kind of a fan of it being kind of on the high side because the bow falls in towards you and you just get such a nice sound when it's up here versus down there. Maybe I'm just crazy. It's probably just the, the F holes are closer to my ear. So um, posture, instrument location, and kind of the, the height of the instrument as well. Not down here, but up here. The next thing that we want is we want the bow to be sitting comfortably on the string and we want it to be comfortably parallel. So that means when I put my arm up, the bow is just parallel, right? And you see how right now it's not. <laughs> so if I just move it up, all of a sudden it's parallel. So we want, again, we want to just be sitting in a way where when we just put the bow up comfortably, it's automatically parallel to the bridge. Because we don't want to have to fight ourselves to try and align it to be parallel, right? We just want it, oh, our instrument up, bow up, and all of a sudden it's parallel. Don't have to worry about it, okay? So that's why practicing in front of a mirror is very helpful. You must have a mirror to practice in front of. Okay, so after that, we have our posture and everything. I want you to just check in with your shoulders and make sure that they're open and comfortable. And then we're gonna talk about this mechanism over here, okay? So all of these parts of your arm, right? All this stuff is attached to your arm up here, right? And your arm kind of wraps around the back, right? We have this thing around the back that we that moves when we go side to side, right? So the arm is very, it's kind of a, it's not just the bow hand, it's not just the wrist, it's not just the elbow, it's all attached to this up here. So if this moves, all of these other things are going to move too, right? I don't have to think about it. And right now I'm just holding my arm in a way that's comfortable. If I raise my arm up, I like to call this kind of handbag arm because as a lady, when I have my handbag, sometimes I, I carry it around with my arm like this. So if my bag is here, it's a really pretentious way to walk. <laughs> but um, anyway, nonetheless, I call this handbag arm. Okay, so when you raise your arm up and then you move it around, you see how your elbow is below your wrist? So a lot of times when we're playing, we're playing like this, where the elbow is actually above the wrist. And then we have to work hard to kind of keep the bow parallel and um, working well. By the way, I am looking at uh, myself here so I can make sure that I'm in the screen, so I'm sorry if that's a bit confusing and weird for you. So anyway, we want to make sure that the elbow is below the wrist, right? And that if this moves, all these other things move too. You see how 
my wrist is going back and forth. I'm not making it go back and forth like this. I would be making it go back and forth while this is not moving. But if I move up here, this is going to just swing back and forth and I don't have to work hard. I don't even really have to work at all to make this move. My wrist is moving because the upper part of my body is moving here. My upper arm is moving. Okay, so just remember we have to keep the arm mobile and um, responding to the changes that might be happening up here. Okay, we have a bunch of shock absorbers happening. So grab the bow, pop it on, make sure it's parallel. Make sure that when we move from the upper arm, all of these other joints that we have move because this is moving, right? And when I let my arm move out, that straightens and this straightens. And when I come back, it curves. I don't have to make it curve, it just curves, right? There we go. So, also, my hair is flat, so it's not on the side. It's flat. It's another important thing. Okay. All right. Next thing that we need to address is how we're holding this bow. I'm going to move a bit closer to you. And we're going to talk about this, this thing. So there's a lot of different bow grips out there. You can get, um, I think it's like... I'll have to link it below, something friends for the bow. <laughs> There's like one that's a little fish, one that's a frog. Um, if you look on my Instagram, it's Violin Viola Masterclass, you'll see um, some of my students have the, the little, that little thing and it's just very helpful. There's another one that just sits here and it's, it just, it's helpful for your fingers to find the grooves. So if you're a beginner and you just want a little bit of extra help holding the bow, you could try out a bow grip. You can find them on Amazon, you could find them on Shara, you could find them on Johnson Strings, um, and just, you could also just put a pencil grip in and, and just see how that feels too. So the most important thing, let me just bring you a really close. In my opinion, right, besides getting the bow hand, take a good look at how everything is lining up. So it's not down here, it's here, right? And these fingers are, they have a really good contact. So they're not sitting up here like this. It's not so solid. This is a joint that we're creating here. It's now part of the arm, part of the body, and it needs to move in a flexible way, right? Okay, so it's the thumb that we're gonna talk about. I'm just trying to show you <laughs> so you can see it. Oh, it's kind of hard. So let me show you this way, okay? Now, a lot of times our thumb looks like this when we're playing. So it's, it would be kind of equivalent to this, okay? And what we want is this, because this is a little bit stronger, more relaxed shape. Um, we have these little shock absorbers here, nice and open and flexible. Right here, they're locked. This isn't good. So we want this to be happening, okay? And you can see, if the bow was here, these fingers, they have a really deep connection here with the thumb, so they're not up here like this. They're kind of behind this first joint here. And can they make a circle? And then these fingers just sit on the side. So let's find that. My thumb's going to go in this little nook here, half on this little part here, and then half on the wooden part in here. You see, it doesn't come through like this. It's right on the tip there. Okay? And these fingers wrap around, and then my first finger is sitting across this joint here. So not across this joint, not across this joint, but across this middle joint here. And the pinky is curved. This is another shock absorber here. It um, carries a lot of the weight of the bow, and it's right on top of this black part. Okay? So, oops, that's my shoulder rest. So you want your thumb to be able to release here. So if your thumb looks like this, you don't really have the ability to release it. Um, so you need to keep it nice and curved like this. So let me, oops, shoulder rest. Let me scoot back a bit. And show you how this all works. Okay, so I'm sitting in a really squeaky chair. So 
sorry about that. It's also the end of the night and I've been teaching all day. Um, so I'm sorry again if I look a bit crazy. So, there we go. Posture, right? And you can just hold the instrument here if you want. Flat bow hair, elbow below wrist, right handbag arm, all these nice and relaxed, bow hand, and then our thumb is nice and curved, fingers have a good connection, and the last thing we're going to talk about is our breath. So, breathe in. <gasps> and then try to play. Not so good, right? So let's try and exhale with the down bow. And you can notice that I'm moving a little bit, right? Just like our lungs expand and contract, we can play completely straight. a little bit of that resistance and just kind of slightly open and close. Okay, so those little tips there should hopefully help you a little bit with the shaky bow hand. Um, try to really play with flat hair and let your arm completely just drop and hang onto the string. So just drop and then let it go. A lot of times we're just really trying to control the bow too much. Right, you see how my elbow's up here? That means I have to press the bow onto the string. I'm not really dropping it, I'm kind of making it sit there. And you see how all the muscles in my arm are kind of working too hard. So now I'm going to let it drop. to work as hard anymore. So um, when, you're pra when you warm up, I would, I would recommend practicing open strings. So use your metronome, you can set it on maybe 72, that's my favorite number, and do four beats per, per um, bow, four beats per bow. until you're really happy with it. Notice what's going on with the body and look at yourself in the mirror. Watch what you do when you play. Just keep your eyes glued on your body. So try to keep your eyes kind of glued on this area. Try not to stare at your eyeballs in the mirror, but stare at this part of your body in the mirror. It should be helpful. So um, I think that's about it. I hope that helps you and I will see you all very soon. Bye!